We are following breaking news this morning on the west side. A construction crane has caught fire in Hell's Kitchen. This is 10th Avenue and 40th Street. That's right. Right now, Thomas Van Essen is on the phone with us. He's the former FDNY commissioner. Thomas, got to get your opinion on this. I mean, we've already seen part of this crane collapse. Is the rest of it possibly able to come down as well? Well, I would never say it's not possible, but it, it's very unlikely. They do a really good job with these cranes. They're really expert people. You know, Crane is a good company. They, um, they do everything they can to make it safe. They, do, they don't plan on having a fire burn for hours and hours of equipment, of course. So they want to get this fire out as quickly as possible so they can get in there and make the repairs that they need to do. It and is, fire me can't, it can't, guys can't get it out as quick as possible yeah. for spraying it from so far away. Because I know you might be taking a look at our live picture. We're seeing the fire crews trying to reach this crane. And from this advantage point, you can kind of see them possibly hitting it. But if they can't, what happens if they cannot reach it directly? Well, they, it'll go out eventually. There's, luckily, in these types of fires, it's all metal up there. There's not a lot of construction equipment. There's not a lot of wood or anything. So... It's only a certain amount of fuel can burn. It, however much fuel is in that uh, in that rig, and these things are around it. You know, you can see it. It's almost out now. From I can see by your video. It's just that they don't want it to keep going and getting more. The metal get more fatigued and weaker and weaker, and they don't want something that they don't plan on falling to fall. Exactly. I mean, this this crane is so high. Uh, it, it seems a little precarious um, and uh, concerning. I mean, in years past, I've covered crane collapses where the whole darn thing falls, but you think it's not like 10, 15, 20 years ago where we would have these crane collapse? Absolutely not. These, uh, all the crane companies now that, that, that you hire to put one like that, that is the, that's a big deal, that crane. Uh, that's a serious operation. I'm sure they have drones going around it by now. They're trying to get views of it from above to see if there's any real serious damage other than the piece that fell. And uh, I, I would predict, <laughs> although it doesn't mean much, that it, it'll be okay. So, I mean, we did see part of the arm already collapse and hit a building across the street. We don't know what kind of damage it did to that building, but it did look like debris was falling from that building. You know, wh what are the firefighters challenged with right now what what is their objective and and how difficult is it for them well you guys cover fires all the time you see how difficult it is when they'll have six tower ladders putting thousands and thousands of gallons of water on a fire that never seems to go out the reason is you can't get to it so when you see this amount of water spraying out it's like your god knows they're not hitting it with any uh, amount of water as much amount of water as they'd like to if they were on top of that crane with a hose, they would have put this fire out a long time ago. Where do they get the water from? The, so far away. Where do they get the water from this high up? Well, the same uh, building. They'll they'll take it from the towers on that building. They'll bring hoses up to the top floor, and uh, there's a standpipe system in that building for that building that they're in. If they had a fire in that building, it would be pumped up. And that's how they're doing it. So we're, we're hearing preliminary reports that two people may have been injured. We don't know if it's somebody on the crane or whether it was somebody on the ground who got hit with debris as uh, that arm uh, of the crane collapsed, hit a building, and sent debris flying down to the ground. So we're seeing, yes. we're seeing white smoke. So does, does this mean, like, you, you think the end is near for this fire? Yes. Yes, Fire Chief, I, I, I want to ask, too, about the evacuation protocols when something like this happens. We do know some of the buildings were evacuated, but you have something like Success Academy Charter School underneath it and across the street from it, Covenant House down below. How, how far out is that radius in terms of evacuating some of the buildings around this crane? You know, I don't know you, the chiefs that are there, you know, we got really good fire chiefs in Manhattan. They, they understand this stuff. They study it. Uh, they are on the scene. This is an area, this is a, a situation where they might not want people in the street. It yeah. might be safer to just keep the kids or whoever is there inside the building. Or if there's a, a tunnel, uh, you know, we got, we got so much underground stuff, we might be able to get them out through a subway tunnel or something or from uh, building to building. 
but I don't think you'd want anybody walking in the street right there mm. if you can avoid it. So right. staying in the building, staying in place, uh, you know, those buildings are all good buildings around there. So the safest space probably in the building, but the chief on the scene will make that decision on uh, you know what, what to do with the kids you, or you know, what people work. Yeah, it's just, it's so terrifying to watch because it's so big, you know what I mean? And yeah, it's New yeah. York City. Yeah, it's All pretty right. exciting. <laughs> uh, former Fire Commissioner Thomas Bonness, and I know you'll be staying with us throughout the morning. We will continue to cover this breaking news on the west side of Manhattan. Good day to you. We're coming right back.